Hi, I'm Eska. You've been watching Music News. Subscribe here. Eska, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing brilliant, thank you. Hey, good stuff. We're here at the brewery and you'll be performing tonight for an award ceremony. Is, um, yeah, that's right. Playing live, is that the best part of the, the job for you? Um, it's one of the best uh, parts of the job. I, I, I have a wonderful studio life and studio relationship and I've got a really love, lovely stage relationship as well. And it, it gets, and it actually it's an opportunity for me to kind of explore two different aspects of you know, my, my personality and, and my skill set. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love absolutely. it all. I mean, your self-titled album was released this year. Is it the culmination of your musical life's work? Uh, no, that sounds too big and bold. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it's that. And although it, it has been written frequently that, you know, this album was five years in the making and it's more like three months. But Really? Yeah, but the, the irony is, it's, it's just that because you know, I, I, I have my own label, run from my kitchen. <laughs> I have a one-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I had to self-release my first EP and I paid for the, the, the making of the, the record. And um, so that process took a lot of money that yeah, I had to course. raise over quite a bit of time. And uh, setting up a label, doing all the legal stuff, trying to actually find a strategy, all of that, you know, because I A&R'd the whole thing, you know. It was, an, it was an awful lot to do, even though actually the making of the music wasn't as long. But, you know, when you have to now think in, a, in sort of an industry, put your, your business head on, yeah, yeah. that takes a bit more time than, than the three months. But of in terms making. of the songs, gathering those, the group of songs. And that was about yeah. 18 months, actually. So it was about an 18 month period that I was songwriting for this record. And actually when we got to the mix stage, there were a couple of songs added that weren't uh, written in that 18 months. But, but you know, there was leading up to the three months of kind of making the record, the songwriting process was about 18 months and that was a period of decluttering. Yeah, yeah. And actually moving, it was my transition period from being a, a, a side musician and a, and a, and a collaborator. Yeah into, you know, kind of getting into my artist domain, you know. Absolutely, but you've been very you've been <laughs> blessed in a way with Giles Peterson, Jamie Callum, amongst the many who've been sort of heaping praise on the Mercury nominated first album. Um, you know, did you always expect such a, a warm reception or was it a surprise? No, it, it was, you know, it's, it's not that you're, you can hope for these things, you can hope for, people to receive your music well, your art well, yeah. it would be foolish to expect it, I think, yeah, otherwise yeah, you'd yeah, be constantly heartbroken, you know, but um, uh, potentially. So I, 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 um, I worked as hard as I could on this music. I wrote as best as I could and at that moment in time. And this record is a document of that moment in time. And to get to this point now where, where it's being recognized by other people, um, it's a real honour and I feel very proud of the work that it's been able to, you know, it, you know because the Mercury's is a creative award, you know, and it's, it, to, 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 it's about a creative achievement as opposed to sort of sales achievement and all yeah, of these yeah, other yeah. things. So I feel very honoured that this work has been awarded such a prestigious kind of nomination. And, and you know, I feel like a winner already, to be honest with you. Absolutely, in many, I mean, it you must know. have raised, given you a, a, an absolute platform on top of it's another been platform. A, it's been a huge platform. I mean, within the first three days, there were headlines saying, you know, my, the streaming on Spotify had gone up by th around 3,000%, you know. Yeah, yeah, so so that, that for me was an in, in, in indicating that, you know, we've got new listeners, you know, these aren't, People have been following me for years and years, but you know, I'm suddenly developing my audience and that's what I hope to get achieve. I hope to achieve that. And, and so, you know, in a way, the Mercury's is giving, you know, press to, to the to record that I, I wouldn't have been able to afford that, not, not as an independent artist working with 
a brilliant but also independent label such as Name. Uh, so it's it's a it's a very useful platform to have in Definitely. terms of promoting the record. And um, I mean, how would you sum up Eska the album and Eska the person? <laughs> <laughs> um, the album, the album is a reflection of a woman's life who has obviously been raised in London. You know, I think it's an immigrant story. You know, I think it's it's stories um, of you know otherness, not just in terms of cultural otherness, but but maybe creative otherness as well. And, I, and I'm hoping that it reflects those things. And that maybe, you know, it will resonate with people in that, and that feeling, that otherness, and that, that, that London Englishness that comes through. I think it was an important uh, uh, pr part of the process of making this record was trying to find authenticity, you know, cultural as well as musical, yeah, artistic yeah, authenticity. You know, so in terms of uh, Esker, how, how does that um, reflect on Esker, the, the, the personally, you know, the artist, then, then hopefully it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a document that, that will enable people to have musical conversations with me when, when I'm long gone. <laughs> uh, that, that kind of excites me. I think, you know, when I think of, um, you know, I can't, kind of come from a classical upbringing and, yeah. You, you, you get your, your, your Schumann book of piano pieces or whatever and you open it up and you start working out what Schumann wrote on the page and you suddenly feel like you're, 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 you're having a conversation with this person who's long gone and you're getting into their way of thinking and you're kind of, oh, oh, oh hello, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, and it's really, there's something really beautiful about that, that the music feels like a, a, a conversation without words, you know. Absolutely, and that's that's yeah, yeah. what hopefully people are having with with me you know um in their own way yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you've been called the, the finest female vocalist in the uk by laura and do you agree <laughs> <laughs> Mark. <laughs> um I, t I tell you what anyone who thinks that they're best at anything is a complete numpty you know you just <laughs> what a foolish way to think of yourself as the being the best at something it's always relative you know it's just you haven't met the person who's better than you maybe <laughs> but they exist believe me you know so um and also it's a bit territorial wasn't it you know in the uk i mean what what, I'm, what by that i mean you know it's nice to be recognized by my peers as you know ha having a, a level of competency <laughs> with my main instrument um but it's also um, exciting for me to keep discovering new voices around the world. There are always voices that excite me constantly around the world. There's Nuram Mint Semali, who I recently listened to, Mauritanian, you know, and that's a voice. <laughs> that's, a, that's a singer, you know. There's always someone, there's always something that you're going to discover that's going to blow you away. And that's how wonderful our world is, you know? Yeah, no, but it's certainly good when, you know, to have people saying that about you, though, it's got to be... It's useful, you know? And yeah, again, yeah, it's the things true. of, you know, how you use these things, you know? Again, it, it's enabled me to have a platform among my peers, not just as a side player, but as an artist. And that's really so beautiful that in, way, in many ways, they're bringing me up and they're saying, stand alongside us, you know, in what... In the, and what we're doing at, at, at the level in which we're doing, you know, yeah, the platform yeah. that we're on. And that's really generous and really kind. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. Great stuff. And in terms of the Mercury Prize, I mean, how do you rate your chances personally? And who do you see as your <laughs> stiffest competition? Yeah. <laughs> well, one in 12. <laughs> it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm, you know, exactly. That, you know, I, after that, who knows? I think we're all aware that winning the Mercury doesn't necessarily mean that you're a winner. Yeah. You know, it's for some people it's been probably not the best thing for their creativity. As irony goes, it's a creative yeah. award. So I think the man, it's, it's now for all the nominees, it's the way in which they decide to win, what winning is for them, you know, not to do with the final night and who wins the 
bigger looking thing, whatever it is <laughs> you hold up. I don't think that's the point. The point is actually when you go, okay, I've been given an opportunity to be, you know, for my work to be uh, noticed at, on, a, on a new platform. Now, now, what do I want to do with that exposure? What, where do I want to go with this? Yeah, yeah. And how's, what's the best route to get there? And I think that's probably what m most of the artists are thinking, you know, it's uh, what, how can I use this to, you know, help further my creativity, you know, winning in a, what, what's that going to do? You win an award and then what, you know, it's not, yeah, that's no, not, that's not the, up, that's, that's not the sure. be all and end all. It's really how you use that, that, that platform. So I'm hoping to use this opportunity as best as I can, help the next record that I'm making, help the tours that are coming in, across Europe and across the UK, all of those things. Yeah, um, I mean, in five, if you had to sort of think ahead, five years, five albums down the line. Oh, nice, yeah. What sort of music <laughs> do you think you'd be making? Um, well, I, I, I happened to see James Holden last night and I, 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 my ears thought that I'd, I'd heard the future, you know. I heard the future when I, and I, it was really, it was an explosion of yeah. ideas. I was hearing some futuristic disco thing in my head. I was just, it was divine. You know, I'd never heard anything like it. So big ups to James Holden <laughs> for being incredibly inspiring last night. You know, when I, when I hear something like that, it makes me want to just, you know, kind of explore new territories. and. So I hope, you know, five years from now that my, as I have evolved personally, then my creative output will also have evolved, you know, as a, as a singer, songwriter, as a producer. And also I've got, a, you know, a, there's a secret desire to go into the visual world and, and make films and yeah. explore that side of my creativity. So I'd be really excited to any, get any into ideas? Well, I, I've got one creative, well, short film idea ah. kind of brewing with a producer. Okay. And uh, perhaps we're, and we're, we're, and we're hoping to collaborate on that, you know, musically and visually, kind of create this sort of uh, three-part short film. Um, and uh, so, we, you know, we'll see where that, we'll just start with small endeavours yeah, and yeah, yeah. kind of work our way up to, to bigger things. I also enjoy the multimedia kind of experience with music and um, exploring ways of bringing three dimensions to the performance element through lighting and visual and movement and all of those things. You know, I, I hope to get to do bigger shows, yeah. you know, one-offs. And I, I've, I've managed to do it before. We did that in 2012 to a sold out Queen Elizabeth Hall and it'd be great to put that bigger project back on its feet uh, yeah, in the excellent. future. Well, I'm sure you will. I mm. mean, you're riding the crest of a wave at the moment. And um, yeah, were you always convinced this, this time would come for you? Um, yeah, I was convinced that my time would come. I just didn't know how and what it would look like. I just, I think for everyone, their time comes, you know, yeah, we, yeah. The, the season well, comes. <laughs> I, I believe for everyone, the season comes, we just have to recognize it. I think sometimes we don't recognize that the season we're in because it didn't come in the shape that we kind of had hoped. And then we missed the point, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is a moment I've been hoping for and I've been praying for and uh, arriving at it now, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I'm still the same, you know, all, I've arrived at it with the same neurosis and the same insecurities that I had the week before. Um, and somehow, in, in a way, it's about kind of finding the way of using uh, that pressure to build up more creative muscle and, and, and uh, maintain working at this level, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I mean, the, the hope and the expectation was there. I, was it, did I know it was going to come in the form of a Mercury? No, but, but it has, and, and here I am. Yeah, I mean, where, where did your musical journey begin? Um, well, music was always a big part of our listening at home, you know, on Sunday afternoons, Dad playing vinyl. So I feel that, you know, I, it's, the credit goes, goes to my dad for beginning my, my journey uh, my, with music and him buying us our first vinyl player 
and him giving us our first vinyl, which was Captain and Tennille. <laughs> this really obscure record by uh, this couple. And we looked at the couple and thought, why, why have you given us this, this stuff that we'd like to... And, you know, he got really excited about giving us... And we, we felt too bad to kind of say anything. Well, I thought, OK. And it was a one vinyl that we had for a long time. So we played it to death. And it's this very odd album that's got a song about muskrat loving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. But <laughs> it holds a really <laughs> dear place in my heart. And, um, you know, I, I guess learning to appreciate to listen to music, all kinds of music, I got that from my dad. And that was echoed in school by a wonderful music teacher called Barbara Carellis, who she just introduced us to a, such a variety of musical styles from classical to reggae, to jazz. We did the whole gamut, you know? And, you know, so I had really great sources of inspiration at school and at home, continually saying, look, love it all. You know, don't be a yeah, Philistine yeah, yeah. about music. There's only good music or bad music. It just, just listen to it all, love it all, appreciate it all. I'm thankful for that. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot for your time. It's been yeah. an absolute pleasure. <laughs> for somebody that's just sort of getting into Esker, and um, yeah. you know, you had, to pick, you had to pick three songs to say, right, check these out. These sum me up as an artist. What uh, three should they uh, check out? Oh, um, well, Shades of Blue, I think, because it's fun and it, there's, there's, there's a bit of musical humour in there and lots of vocal layering that I enjoy mm -hmm. doing. Um, Probably uh, a, a song called um, "I'll Be Around," which is a cover of a Shaka Khan tune, apparently. But it was it was it was done on uh, on an album that I featured on by Robert Mitchell and his group Panacea. Just because you know it's a familiar, it's a it's a it's a popular song, but it's with a jazz take on it, and it was a real stretch vocally. Uh, I think again, it's a sense of adventure. Um, people would find in that and um, any of my work with um, oh gosh I'm trying to think should I do it all for my album is that the best thing to no, do no from? whatever you whatever you feel sums you up oh really? what's ah so hard what in all honesty you know to answer that question honestly I just don't think it's possible to sum yourself yeah, up yeah. and in 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 a ha and just after making one album, you know, although I've been on countless records, yeah. um, I still feel that the best is yet to come. And so, um, I guess in listening to maybe Rock of Ages, Shades of Blue, and Boundaries from my current record, yeah. that would give a, a nice breadth that would sort of probably help people s begin to, to start <laughs> a a a answering questions about who Esker is, but Esker doesn't know herself, so <laughs> goodness knows how they're going to get on. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to say to Music News Watchers? Um, you've been listening to Esker on Music News. Thank you. Magic. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>